Raiden, we are clear on the rules of engagement, yes? Clear enough. I can use deadly force against any hostile element. Hostile cyborgs, I can strike first. Basically, yes. The actual rules of engagement is more specific. A long list of no's. But you have the idea. You want to recap the highlights for me? <sighs> no weapons prohibited by international treaty. No use of force against non-combatants. Especially officials or anyone with political power who may be needed for negotiations. No use of force against any unarmed hostile seeking to surrender. And no use of force against any non-cyborg combatants without prior verbal warning. And that includes Dolzayev? Duh, but this should not be a problem. Any non-cyborg is little threat to you, Dolzayev included. Besides, we have no signs of any non-cyborg hostiles anywhere in the area. Not even one. We think Dolzayev is working alone with Desperado here. In any case, there is the ROE. Otherwise, deadly force is authorized only in clear case of self-defense. So basically, civilians off-limits, human hostiles verbal warning, hostile cyborgs, anything goes. Yes, this is a conventional warfare scenario, so the rules are based on the Hague Convention. Yeah, sounds pretty standard. Still good to list out all the no-nos before things get too hairy. ROEs that only specify who you can engage require too much judgment. They make it harder to remain focused on battle. Duh. This is why most military's ROEs list negatives, not positives. The few that take the other approach? I pity their soldiers the questions they face. No, oh, and for our purposes, UGs are considered the same as hostile cyborgs. Copy that. We have no rules about property damage, but uh, keep it minimal, yes? It just makes us look bad. Anything standing in your way, trees, streetlights, this is fine. But there's no reason to damage civilian homes, or to go snooping around in them. Goes without saying. Looks like a war zone out here. The palace cleared out quick when Dolzaev's men showed up. The streets got pretty hot after that. We're definitely gonna see a few civilian casualties here. Luckily, it looks like most of them got out of the city before things got bad. They've basically got control of the entire town and are using the refinery as their HQ. And that's why we're hitting the plant. Keep in mind, those cyborgs are contractors. For most of these guys, this is just a job. In theory, once you eliminate their commanding officer, they should scatter pretty quickly. Brighton. No? What's up? I wanted to follow up on our talk earlier about the stress that comes with the job. PMC work can be traumatic, even for non-combatants. If the pressure ever gets to be too much, have one of the ex-military there take over. Just... I'm not doing that, Raiden. PMCs wield massive influence over international affairs. Abolishing SOP didn't change that. They need a better understanding of what they're mixed up in. The laws, politics, local cultures. Ex-military aren't here to provide that. They can't. We need civilian voices like mine here, too. You're right. Just take care of yourself. Ha! <laughs> Don't worry. Africa was more than enough excitement for one lifetime. It's a good thing that limo was armored. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you'd now be the world's clumsiest cyborg. Hey! Cyborg Courtney could have been your partner. I thought have saved your ass. How? By spilling coffee all over the enemy? <laughs> Come on, I'm not that... Oh, son of a... Please tell me that was a joke. Raiden, shall we review the capabilities of your new body? Copy that. Go ahead, Doc. As we discussed, you've been outfitted with two revolutionary new abilities. Fuel electrolyte absorption and self-repair from seized nanopaste. Precisely. First, electrolyte absorption. This is simplicity itself. As your HF blade is linked directly to your fuel cells, simply cut into any source of electrolytes. Say, a hostile cyborg made up of CNT muscle fiber. And your fuel cells will recharge on their own. Rather elegant, wouldn't you say? I would indeed. It's been great so far. But ah, the repair process is a bit more uh, involved. A bit more messy, you might say. Most military cyborg models store a cache of biotic self-repair nanopaste in their lower abdomen. So I need to slice them open and use Zandatsu to extract it. Cut and take, in other words. Correct. 
Once extracted, you need only to crush this unit in your hand to absorb the repairing agent inside. Keep in mind, it is extremely delicate. If the unit should hit the ground, some paste will surely leak out. It will still repair your body, but less so than if you can retrieve it directly before your foe falls over. Basically, harvest their organs before their body can even hit the ground. Rather gruesome, I realize. But then you Americans enjoy a bit of gore, don't you? I may be a citizen, but I've never really thought of myself as American. Oh? Hmm. Well, yes, I suppose I could understand that, given your history. But what then? Surely you don't identify as a Liberian. I don't identify with anyone. No nation. No ethnic group. I'm my own man. Anyway, I seem to recall those gory torture porn movies were pretty popular in Germany, too. Indeed, indeed. These splatter films are big in Germany, Russia, Japan, everywhere. Well, everywhere except regions afflicted by actual warfare. It all has to do with taming our fears, you know? Huh? The desire to feel fear, to taste death, but from a safe distance. These films allow the viewer to delude themselves into thinking they have overcome their fears. This... Okay, uh, okay, Doc, I got the gist. Let's save the full psych lecture for some other time, though, huh? So, Raiden, what's your game plan? <laughs> you sound excited. Oh, I am. Front row seats to rematch. Raiden versus Giant Gecko. I've heard the stories. <laughs> I'm trying to work here, you know? Ah, don't be modest. It was you who taught anti-Irving tactics to my men. This I think you could handle with no legs and both eyes closed. <laughs> Boris. Okay, okay, I know. Never let your guard down in battle. So, let us recap what we know about your foe. An AT Corp representative gave me brochure last time he stopped by. The most recent model is the Block 30. Probably this is what they're facing here. Muscle contraction rate is increased by 6%, and the chassis is made from honeycomb boron fiber reinforced plastic. It's lighter, more durable. The engine still puts out 650 horses, but I say it is much more agile now. Can you tell the difference? Dunno. It's been a while since I've had the pleasure. Equipable sensors have not changed much. Of course, we have the standard camera eye. Also, milliwave radar, low light camera, infrared camera, acoustic positioning gear, chemical sniffer. It looks like it's been mounted with 50 cal. Pretty light gear for one of those guys. Light isn't the word that comes to mind, Boris. Well, extra agility or not, a lizard is a lizard. For you, this should be easy-peasy. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> well, off you go. Time for the fun, yeah? Oh, this video will be perfect for sales presentations. Ugh, copy. Got yourself a gecko problem, huh? It's strong and speedy. Against a regular soldier, it'd be overkill. Yeah. I've seen him tear through more than a few troops, but I'm no regular soldier. No doubt. Against state-of-the-art like you, I almost feel sorry for it. Probably not a lot I can tell you here that you don't already know. Yeah, I've got this one covered. Well, time for a little pest control, I guess. So these self-repair units and the other cyborgs, they mean they can heal themselves at any time? Indeed. It is typically a slow process, not much faster than a regular human body heals a wound. And you didn't think it was a good idea to give me one of these things? Certainly not. We removed all extraneous options in your case to maximize power and speed, you know. Healing wounds is extraneous? Your ability to absorb the nanopaste agent is far more efficient, Raiden. With it, your wounds heal almost instantly. I know, but... And a standard repair unit, once depleted, is nothing but an empty shell inside you. Dead weight! I get that, Doc, but it also means I need to constantly be grabbing them out of enemies. No, it doesn't. Don't be silly. Simply avoid taking damage and you will be fine. Yeah, <laughs> simple. The stealth craft made it back to Sochi, all right? Duh. Safe and sound. No repairs necessary. Some routine maintenance and she'll be as good as new. Good to hear. I'm guessing that thing doesn't come cheap. Well, an old Soviet army friend gave me discount. He runs a PMC specializing in airborne warfare. An air force for hire? <laughs> That's a new one. 
Ever since SOP, Merck started to fill more and more regular combat duties. SOP ended, but the trend did not. Most every modern military relies on PMC support in one way or another. Good news for Maverick, I suppose. Anyway, that's quite the little jet your friend has. I was expecting a lot of turbulence coming in that low, but she was smooth as silk. Didn't feel like I was a bird exactly, but probably the next best thing. The MQ-133C uses a brand new type of active adjustment control system. Sensors on the plane take readings 120 times a second, and uh, to be honest, I don't know how it works. But the crew chief tells me this is what keeps her flying so steady. It is all state-of-the-art technology. There are only three of them in the entire world. Even the RQ-133 spy plane she is based on is only two years old. It is fitted specially for Cyborg. So maybe demand is a bit low now, but I think that will change soon, eh? Hmm. It's funny. Its guts are all bleeding edge. But from the outside, it looks almost retro. Until recently, stealth aircraft design was focused on radar absorbing materials and improving aerodynamics. But lately, engineers are trying to use the shape of the craft to do more than improve gas mileage. Maneuverability is a low priority. This kind of plane is not meant for dogfighting, after all. And we can afford all this? I hate to ask, but will we clear a profit on this op? You need not worry about such things. But yes, we should be fine. Where the proper equipment can make or break a mission, we should have the best. That miss with the anti-air missile last month was a painful reminder of this lesson. Ah, uh, yeah. I see what you mean. Sorry, man, but I have to ask. Where did Mr. Lightning Bolt come from, anyway? Ugh, seriously? <sighs> All right. Well, I told you where I got Raiden from, right? World War II, the Japanese had a plane called Raiden. The Allies named it Jack. Yeah, I remember. And my real name's Jack. So yeah, they codenamed me Raiden. They being the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Never really suited me. But it's better than... Jack just reminds me too much of the past. I hear you. Someone once told me, you can find your own name and your own future. After that, I dropped Jack for good. Right, right. And this lightning bolt business? Well, the rye part of Raiden means thunder, and Den is electric. So Raiden is basically lightning bolt. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I was explaining that to Imani, and he just busted out laughing. <laughs> so he called you that as a joke? He was basically just giving you shit. <laughs> yeah. He actually had a pretty good sense of humor. He was one of the most charismatic men I'd ever met. I don't know much about politics, but being around him, you could just tell he was a natural leader. <sighs> Such a goddamn shame. Mm-hmm. I won't let it happen again. Desperado ends here. Comic book villains and all. Yeah. We're counting on you, uh, Mr. Lightning Bolt. <laughs> Oh. Most fascinating foe, and such natural speech. I've never heard of a UG capable of conversing of its own free will. Yeah, maybe we can just talk this through. Any weaknesses come to mind? Something I can exploit? No particular weak points come immediately to mind. It's fast as hell, and it's flinging knives at me from a distance. Indeed. I'm not sure your body can match its speed. And if you can't dodge the knives, then your best bet is to deflect them. Try entering blade mode. I'll give it a try. I've seen a lot of weird stuff, but this takes the cake. Well, I'm glad you're entertained. Too bad you're missing all the fun. It's a real party down here. Sorry, buddy. My specialty's cultural studies, not combat scenarios. If you're looking for my help in a brawl, you must be getting pretty desperate. <laughs> Good point. Besides, if you've got time to screw around on the codec, can't be all that bad, right? We'll see. Okay, back to the party. You call for reinforcements? <clears throat> Crafty little mutt. This could be trouble. Not really. They're packing self-repair units, right? Unless they're stronger than I think, this could actually be a good thing. Well, hopefully, yes. But be careful. 